deadline here, we're going to be going over another in our continuing Commodore 64 programming series. Today we have horizontal scroller message with color cycling, multicolor characters, and raster line changes. City map. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our constants file. This is from the other previous videos. <clears throat> then we're going to import the macros file. Again, these are from previous tutorial videos that I've already done. And you can download this um, file from our GitHub repo. You can follow along, or you can type it in, whichever you want to do. <clears throat> All right, let's keep going. We're going to be using a custom font. And uh, this is similar to the font that we've already used from a previous video, but slightly modified to include multicolor characters. And uh, let's take a look at that real quick. All right, so the program that I'm using to edit characters is called VCHAR64, and it is available on GitHub on Ricardo Caseta's github repo and if you scroll down on there you can see there's a download for binaries for win32 mac or open pandora so i've got vchar open i've actually already edited the files to make it look how i want and uh so okay we're using multicolor mode right here. You can turn it off. And for what we're going to be doing on our screen <clears throat> is the first few rasters are going to be non multicolor mode or standard character mode. And then after a certain raster, it's going to swap and it will be multicolor mode at that point. And then we're going to draw these characters on the screen where I've edited these to be multicolor and look like a city zen logo sort of thing and then at a certain raster we're going to turn that back off for the scroller message we're just going to use these characters up here but you know what you do is you edit your file and then you save your project and then you want to export it to um, ASM just want to export the car set the char set here I've already gone over this in another video, but uh, we'll do it again Save it characters ASM Okay, so once you've got that done You then open up your, your file and then you have to go in and change all the semicolons to slash slash and at the end there's this char set count which you have to comment out so anyway that is the the char set that we're using and how to get it with, with VCHAR64, that's how we did it. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do, let's, the first thing we wanna do is let's add a couple of constants. <clears throat> Screen bottom left equals 7C0 and constant screen bottom right. 
This isn't really necessary. We could actually just type this out below. It just makes it more readable when we're typing in the code. And so what this does is gonna give us a couple of constants. And these constants are the equivalent of these bottom locations of the screen where I've poked A's into the screen locations. And uh, this is gonna be for the scroller and the color cycling that we're going to be doing at the bottom. Okay, so let's see what do we got. Let's get rid of that. Um, I'm going to put the basic upstart. This is pretty much what you're going to be doing on every one of these machine language programs. Not necessarily everything that you do is going to have a basic upstart. You might just want to compile some data into an assembly or into a machine language program to load in. But for pretty much, if you want to run an executable program, this is what you're going to do. And that's pretty standard. All right, so from our macros, we have the clear screen. Let's do black screen. Clear screen from clear screen macro from macros.asm. <clears throat> okay, so this is sort of an initialization phase of the program. So we're going to be initializing certain variables, certain screen elements. Uh, first thing we're going to be doing is setting up the multicolor characters, colors. So let's load accumulator with light gray. Set up multicolor character colors store the accumulator in background color one and these um, constants are from the constants.asm file and you can go up there and look at those if you want the colors are built in um, to kick assembler so you don't have to define those anywhere these background color one color two color three that's uh, the locations that are associated with multicolor characters not sure which exactly location it is let's take a look background color characters Where is it? Okay, here it is. D022, D023, and D024, which is 53282, 53283, and 53284. That's for your multicolor characters. And that's where that comes from. Alright. Now, the next thing we want to do. Let's fill the screen with white colors. So we'll load an X, register with zero, fill white. And we're not gonna fill all the screen, but just some of the screen. We'll store color RAM, comma X. And then for multicolor mode, you've got, it uses the bottom three bits in addition to other bits. Hold on, let's see. Okay, from the c64-wiki.com, defining multicolor character. In multicolor mode, the pixels are joined 
two at a time to form bit pairs, yielding a matrix of four double width pixels by the same eight rows as in high resolution mode. An example of this principle is shown to the right. So you're losing resolution when you're doing this, where you usually have eight pixels across, you've only got four pixels across now for each character. And it's um, depending on the bit pair combination, the color of each pixel will be transparent or background if the pair is zero. And then the color indicated in address 53282 is where the bit pair is 01. The color indicated in address 53283 is where bit pair is 10. Okay, so apparently we didn't actually even need background color three. All right, background color three is actually based on what is in the color RAM value of the screen location where the character's at. And so the text screen in multicolor mode uses the most significant of the four bits in each character's individual color. This means that the screen can display both multicolor and high resolution characters side by side. But the disadvantage is that the individual color for each multicolor character can only be chosen from the second half colors 8 through 15 of the 16 color palette. So you're losing color resolution as well. The two colors stored in 53282 and 53283 are common for all multicolor characters on the screen, but may assume any of the 16 available color codes. Okay, so activate the multicolor mode. Uh, we haven't got to that yet. All right, so let's stop here. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so going back, let's take, go ahead and we don't need these um, entries for background color three. So we can go ahead and get rid of those. And the way the color RAM works for multicolor mode. So it doesn't matter what's in the upper four bits. What matters is in the, is in these four lower bits. So for white, it's going to be one, right? But you've also got to set this fourth bit to a one for the color RAM in order to indicate that you're going that you want to use multicolor mode. So that right there is a nine load accumulator with nine, and so we're going to store the accumulator at color RAM plus 154 comma X. These are this is going to put nine in the color RAM location starting at where we're putting the multicolor cities in <clears throat> custom characters right so the first line up here is for the very top line of the program and this is for the multicolor mode and this is just dealing with color RAM on the screen so we're going to compare X with FE. This is just filling up some characters. It, it's going to overflow what we actually want, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. Fill white. Branch if not equal to fill white. All right. So there's our color RAM field for what we want to use it for. All right. What's next? Let's print our message at the top of the screen. All right, so load X, register with zero. Put a label, text loop. <clears throat> load accumulator with initial text, comma X. The initial text is what we'll fill in in a minute. And that's where we're gonna have our text message. All right, branch if equal to do text loop two. Now this is going to be <clears throat> based on like if we load accumulator from initial text comma X, 
If it's a zero, then if it's equal to zero, then it will branch to do text loop two. But if it's not, then we got to store the accumulator, screen RAM, comma X, increment the X register, and jump to text loop. Okay, do text loop two, label, load X with 64, Now this is printing out the multicolor um, City Zen logo that we did with the multicolor characters. And we're gonna have to do some finagling here. So <clears throat> we're gonna transfer X to the A register. Then we're gonna store the accumulator at 1215 comma X. 1215 is the screen location already predetermined where we're going to put the cities in logo and then increment the X register now compare X with 76 branch if not equal to text loop 2 now put the first row And um, once it gets to that point, it's going to fall through. So we're going to load X with 96, create a new label, text loop 3, transfer X to A, store the accumulator at 1223 comma X. Uh, increment the X register and then we're going to compare X with 108 that's going to be the end of our characters that we want to draw onto the screen so if you so okay what this is doing let's pull up VCHAR again so if you look here, this is the beginning of our um, tile index. And if you look here to the right, it says tile index 64. And this is the 64th character. Right? And this corresponds to what value is poked onto the screen. So we we um, load X with 64, we transfer X to A. And the reason why we're doing this is because we want to increment, increment both of the um, index of this and the screen location to where it's going to be. So we can store accumulator 1215 comma X. And we have the accumulator Um, 64, 65, and then it'll be 1215, 1216, etc. <clears throat> Increment X, keep doing it until you get to 76, and which is here. So this is 70, the 76 character. We don't want to print that. We don't care about that, right? And so the next line here, load X with 96. That's going to be here. You see the tile index where it says 96? That's where we're looking at. And we've updated down here where it stores it to 1223 because that's where we want to start printing on the screen or poking, I should say. And uh, it does this same method, increments X and stores that into the screen location until it reaches 108. That's what we got here, 108. And once it reaches that, it just falls through to the next section. And what we're gonna do here, it's gonna jump to start. I'm gonna create another label, 
down below. The reason why is because we want to put our initial text label here and put our text that we want to put at the top. Cities in scroller message by deadline. And then end it with a byte zero so that it will break out. And that is the same. That is what this does here. It branches as if it's equal to do loop to, do text loop to, right? That's what that byte zero does. Okay. So now we can put our start label. And this is just going to allow us to put this um, data into the memory in between the execution. Okay. What do we got? What do we want to start with? I guess I should have labeled it something different, but what we're going to be doing now is we're going to fill initial fill, initial color fill of screen for the color cycling at the bottom or the um, wait, I guess what we should call it is the for the scroller message color <clears throat> alright so load accumulator a dark gray let's just give it a dark gray color to begin with you can give it any color you like doesn't matter Uh, create a label fill color loop. We're gonna be looping Store accumulator at colors Bottom left Minus one comma X. Oh Probably should put in a constant For the colors for the color cycling actually let's go ahead and fill that in a constant Colors, bottom left, db c0, <clears throat> um, color var, we're going to use this a little later, and we're just going to, it's going to be a temporary var location, I should, constant, color, timer, this will be for the timer <clears throat> for the color cycling. Okay, so we got the color variable set up. Boom, boom, boom. All right, back to where we were at. Fill color loop. Now we want to decrement the X register. <clears throat> Excuse me. Compare X to FF. Branch if not equal to fill color loop. Now we'll fill our scroller message colors with a dark gray color to initially begin with. Um, <laughs> let's see, we should probably disable interrupts at this point. Oh, we also have to, um, point the Vic chip to look at the new characters that we created point to the new characters so just or a with string 0c and then store accumulator vic mem pointers <clears throat> real simple um, what this does it corresponds to this location here is 3000 custom font right
Okay, so we can start with the main program. Loop one. Load accumulator with string 5F. Wait for raster line 5F. <clears throat> Looking at that raster line again. I'm going to compare with Vic raster counter. Branch if not equal to loop 1B. Okay, so 5F is where on the screen it has, it starts the multicolor mode. That's the raster in which we want to start that multicolor mode. So let's load the accumulator with Vic control register 2. Turn on multicolor mode. Now let's put another label here. If not at 5F, go to loop 1B. Right, so we're turning on the multicolor modes. So let's OR with number 16. Store the accumulator with Vic. Control Reg 2. Okay, so that should turn on the multicolor mode. Let's also put a white border at this point. Change border to white. Store the accumulator, border color. Okay, so. <clears throat> Let's put 1B. It's going to skip that multicolor mode, turn on, and change the border to white if the raster counter is not at 5F. So let's do another check here. F2. Wait for raster line F2. F2 is where we're, we're looking at the scrolling message. So compare Vic raster counter. Branch if not equal to loop one. <clears throat> if it's not at F2, go to loop one. All right. So this is where we're checking for the Vic raster, where it's at and doing different things. So if it is at loop one, or if it is at F2, then we want it to turn off multicolor mode. So let's load accumulator, Vic control reg two, turn off multicolor mode. character mode and that with 239 store the accumulator with Vic control reg 2 store the accumulator after ending it with 239 we'll also want to let's change the border back to black change border to black right okay now that we've changed the Vic control register mode and the border color it's time to look at the actual scrolling of the message and the color cycling for the scroller message. We've got everything else done up to this point. So let's start, let's put a var label in here. Then we're gonna load the accumulator with zero. 
And um, well, let's just put a comment here. We're going into 38 column mode and set scroll bits. And we're going to end that with 07. And um, so for the eagle eyed viewers out there, you're going to be thinking, well, if you and 07 with 00, zero well, you're going to get zero every time. That's true. But var label plus one is what we're going to be modifying in the code below. So it's a self modifying code, right? So that number is going to change when it's executing will be changed with self modify self modifying code right so once we get that loaded and ended with 07 we're going to store into the vic control reg2 Okay, we don't care about any of the other bits that are in Vic Control Reg 2, right, at this point. So let's go ahead and we'll create another loop here. We'll load the accumulator with FF. Wait for raster line FF. Compare Vic raster counter branch if it's not equal to loop to you okay so it's going to do a loop all the way straight through all these um, rasters until it gets to the last red um, raster which is FF and then it will load accumulator with C8 and reset the borders to 40 column mode. Store that in the Vic control edge. Two. Okay. Um, this is where we actually modify what's in var label plus one we decrement that and we'll do a check here in a second load the accumulator with var label plus one and this var label plus one it actually corresponds to this zero zero here this load accumulator is going to be an opcode which is at var label but this var label plus one is the byte we're going to be modifying right we're going to end that with 07 compare to, to 07 so that's saying is it equal to 07 basically Branch if not e branch if not equal to skip move, okay. That means it's still scrolling. So let's go ahead and create our skip move label down here. And this is where we're going to start with the color cycling. But so before we get to skip move, we need to fill in what's going to happen in between. And this is just going to move the characters, right? So let's move scroller characters. I'm going to load X with zero move loop one 
<clears throat> Load accumulator with screen bottom left plus one comma X. Store that at screen bottom left comma X. Increment the X register. Prepare X to 39. Branch if not equal to move loop one. Okay, so I've written a little program in basic to kind of de demonstrate what's going on here in a slow motion. Let's run it. It's just copying characters across. You run it again. I'll take the same characters and keep moving it. Run it again. Keeps on keeping on. And so if you notice that the last character was um, just copying uh, what seemed to be a random character, but it was actually the screen memory plus one into that uh, final location, which was uh, like a diagonal Petsky character. But we want to, what we want to do at this point is right over that location, the next uh, character in our scroller message. So let's go ahead and create another uh, label here. Uh, move loop two. I'm gonna load X with uh, zero. Load accumulator with hello message comma X. If the hello message is a label that we're gonna create here in a second. We're gonna store that at screen bottom right. Uh, no index. So increment X register. <clears throat> Load the accumulator with hello. What? Hello message. Comma X. Compare it with uh, FF. And that's going to be our terminator. Instead of a zero this time. We're going to branch if not equal to move over one. And if it is, we're going to load X with um, zero, zero. The reason why we do this is because um, we want to be able to print out at symbols if we want. So I'm going to store X in VLP two plus one. Right, that's going to increment this um, MVLP to X register zero zero. Kind of like the same self modifying code we did before. This is going to uh, change the position of um, where we are at in the actual scroller message. All right, so we're going to get back down here. <clears throat> we've moved the characters. We've um, put character from scroller message onto bottom right of the screen that's what that little block does now we're at the color cycling we've act okay so at this point we've actually scrolled everything we've moved the characters if they needed to be moved now we can deal with the color cycling. So first thing we want to do is increment the color timer. All right, increment color timer. Now it is a variable that we set up in the beginning. Um, load accumulator with color timer. Let's just um, let's give it a let's make it do five loops. Branch of equal to more color. So if it's not equal to more color, then it's gonna jump to loop one. All right, so loop one is all the way back up here. And that's where it loops, the main program. 
Uh, loop one, it just waits for the raster line, 5F, and continues to do everything we've done already. Just over and over. All right. So if it is equal to five, we'll do more color cycling with the more color label. Load accumulator with zero. Store the accumulator at color timer. This will reset the color timer. Reset color timer. Okay, and then uh, move colors. All right, so we're going to load X with 39. Boom. Should be a, that. And then we'll create a label, cycle colors. Load the accumulator with colors, bottom left, minus one. Because the reason why we're doing minus one in this case is because the colors are going to be moving in the opposite direction of the scroll. Let's store the accumulator with colors, bottom left, right? Oh, comma X, because it's a loop. Decrement the X register, compare X with FF. Branch if not equal to cycle colors. <clears throat> That'll move the colors, which we're gonna define here in a second. <clears throat> All right, so Let's increment the color bar. This actually should be called color bar index. All right, so we're gonna load the X with the color bar index. And then load accumulator with color table, comma X. We're gonna create the color table here in a minute. Okay, we'll compare that with FF. We'll use that as a terminator. Branch if equal to reset colors. Store the accumulator at colors bottom left. Okay. And then we'll jump to loop one at this point. Now, we'll reset the colors. This is going to say if if the end of the color table has been reached, let's reset the color. I guess it should have said reset color index, but all right, and then jump to loop one. And that should pretty much be the end of the program. We just need to set up a couple of uh, tables now to um, put our hello message and color table. All right. So hello message is going to be, let's do the kick assembler encoding screen code upper and then text hello this is a horizontal scroller message by deadline of cities in this is and put a space Got more text. <clears throat> I'm going to put this in uppercase. This is a modified version of the example provided 
with kick assembler. It is dot text more dot text block. I guess I could have done it all in one line, but it's more readable if you do it in multi lines like this. This is part five of the Commodore 64 programming series videos on our YouTube channel. Dot dot dot. Okay. Then we'll end that with a dot byte FF. Okay. And that is for up here. Compare with FF. All right. So that pretty much makes our hello message table. Now let's put the color table in. Color table is going to be dot byte, and then we're going to use the dark gray, sort of a gray, um, light gray, white, light gray, gray, dark gray. <clears throat> And then we'll end that with the FF. And yeah, there's our color table. Dark gray, gray, light gray, white, light gray, gray, dark gray. So at this point, we should be able to run this guy and see what happens. Oh, we got a syntax error. The symbol text loop is already defined in line 46. Let's see, what did I do wrong here? Oh, I put a colon at the end, so can't have can't have a colon there. Let's try running it again. And there you go. Color cycling at the bottom. Uh, Multicolor characters in the middle with white border color, and then it changes it back at. Uh, the final raster line if you like this video please like it and share it and all that jazz you might want to subscribe because I've got some other stuff coming up the next thing that we're going to be looking at is how to transfer pet mate screens onto uh, assembly language I've got a macro already written I'm gonna go over that then we're gonna start exploring disk operations so stay tuned also I just want to remind everyone that everything that we're doing with the programming series on our channel even stuff that's in some of our other types of videos like holiday specials all that can be found on our github webpage which I'm going to put in the description below additionally we have a discord channel that we've started up you can find us on Twitter we have a Facebook group and we're also on Instagram. So all these links will be in the description below. Until next time, this is Deadline with Cities In.